A steam plant using a rebuilt Stuart 10V steam engine. Part 6. Piping the steam engine to the boiler and selecting the type of mounting bolts for the parts on the baseboard. After bending and silver soldering the steam union fittings in place, I show lagging the pipe using a piece of string. This short piece of steam piping from the boiler's outlet tap to the engine will get very hot indeed. This Pisces boiler design is very similar to the Stuart 501 and 504 models, where the centre tube underneath the boiler picks up the steam from the boiler, passes it through the fire before it goes back to the tap and out to the engine. This short piece of steam pipe is in a very accessible place. The lagging is a safety precaution, more about that later. For now, using a felt tip pen, I'm marking the position of the pipe so I can cut it at two points. In my smaller workshop, I don't have a bandsaw, but I have one of these, a diamond cutter in a bench-mounted Proxon mini drill. I didn't show the cutting of the first part because my hand was in the way. This clip shows the felt tip pen mark on the other end of the pipe. A quick look at the steam tap. This is fitted with an adapter union. Normally, a steam tap of this size is suitable for 3 16 pipe, but with an adapter union, you can use 4mm or 5/32nd pipe. The small diamond cutter in the Proxon mini drill cuts the pipe very quickly. The only problem being is that the pipe gets quite hot, so I'm holding it at the bottom using a pair of pliers. To deburr the pipe, I would normally use a one inch belt sander, but that's in the other workshop. So instead, in this workshop, I'm using a drum sander, which makes short work of the burrs, cleans up the end, and the parts are ready to be silver soldered. A test fit in position shows me that the pipe is the correct length, and the parts are now ready to be taken into the main workshop for silver soldering. This final check on the length of the pipe tells me that everything's OK. This next part of the video is all about selecting suitable fixings to bolt the boiler, the engine and the condenser down onto the baseboard. I decided not to use steel fixings for securing the parts of the baseboard because these will go rusty. For the boiler and condenser I'm going to use dome head brass bolts. These are also known as machine screws. I am not going to use wood screws though. I could use things like this, but I really don't like them. I prefer an engineering option. This is not what I'm going to be using. It's a countersunk 4BA bolt. I intend to machine the heads off two of these bolts, and in place of the bolt head, I will lock tight a brass nut in place. This will look a lot better. I think for the engine, it's far better than either a wood screw or a dome headed bolt. Although I think it's a good idea to provide both types of fixings so the owner of the plant can decide which type to use. Back to the piping. Here's the fitting from one end that I silver soldered onto the pipe. And to be honest, I made a bit of a mess of it. I used some very thin silver solder that appeared to run worse than the normal stuff does. But this doesn't matter at all because the pipe is going to be covered in string. And talking about string, this is what you need. This is not polypropylene string, that would melt. You need to select a material that will not melt when subjected to these high temperatures. Why the superglue? Well, first of all, you stick one end of the string to the pipe itself, and then you start winding the string around and around the pipe. Periodically, apply some superglue. This is ordinary superglue, not the stuff I would normally use. I use medium viscosity superglue for most jobs. This stuff's very runny, which is great because it soaks into the string very well. This is a very tedious yet strangely satisfying job, particularly when you get to the end. And when you get to the end, cut the string underneath the pipe where it's not very visible. Here's a job almost complete. I cut off the string underneath the lower part, then I finely trimmed it so the cut end was underneath the pipe, and finally applied some more super glue to this area. The job's nearly done, but the string is a bit hairy. Here I'm quickly introducing the lag into the flame on my blowtorch. Needless to say, make this a quick job, you don't want to burn the string. This shows the pipe after it's been through the flame, and it's a lot better. You can actually paint this string using some white paint, but the paint doesn't stay white for long, owing to the high temperature. I'm just checking that the pipe lines up perfectly with the boiler tap, and indeed, as you see here, it does. Time now to plan the fitting of the boiler to the baseboard, and I'm using a ruler for this, or a steel rule to give it its proper name. Exactly three quarters of an inch to the edge at each end puts the boiler in the centre of the baseboard, and at the back, 
The boiler is one inch from the edge. This allows plenty of room for the parts and it just looks right. The next part of the job is to mark the positions to drill some holes for the bolts, or machine screws, or whatever you call them. For this job, I'm using a Sharpie felt tip pen. When doing this job, be very careful not to move the boiler out of position. I'm double checking the measurements before I commit myself. Nothing's moved, so I can mark the last hole, and now I have four spots on the baseboard where I need to drill holes which can be threaded to take 4BA bolts. I get comments about doing this, so I'll preempt some of them. Once I've drilled the hole tapping size for 4BA, threaded the hole in the wood and applied some super glue, it's surprisingly strong. To conclude this episode, it's top tip time. If you apply a spinning drill bit to a piece of wood or metal, it's likely to slide all over the place, and on this really nicely finished baseboard, I really don't want that to happen. Instead, I apply some pressure with the drill bit onto the baseboard, exactly where I want it to be, and rotate the chuck by hand. This makes a deep mark in the top surface of the wood, which is a perfect guide for the twist drill once you start to drill the holes. Sometimes on a baseboard, I would use a centre punch, but to be honest, I do find this a better method. In no time at all, the baseboard is ready for drilling. I will show that in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.